So percent error is something that's actually surprisingly easy to do. There's just an equation for it. And we're just looking at um, how two different numbers differ from each other in that sense. Uh, so when you have an approximated or a calculated value, we compare that to the exact or the accepted value. Uh, so we have this equation right here, this looking at this weird looking e is called epsilon uh, and that's just va minus ve over ve and don't forget ve is the exact value that's the one that's sort of accepted one and then va is your approximate value or the, the one you calculated um, I like this little joke right here uh, with these histograms here. See, these are here represent error bars. This is like how unsure you are. So you say, sorry, we just can't trust you because the uncertainty, the error bar is too big. Ha -ha. So let's look at this equation right here. You don't have to memorize this equation. That's really great because this is on your formula booklet, which is great. Uh, so now let's just maybe look a little bit deeper into this equation right here. So what does this stuff right here really mean? Um, well, this right here, this is your percent error. I mean, that's this thing you're actually trying to find. Uh, this VA, remember that's your approximated value. VE is your exact value. What does this weird thing right here mean? Do you remember what that means? I don't know if you do, but it's called absolute value. So absolute value. Now what this means is that if a value is negative, you make it positive. If it's positive, you leave it positive. Okay, so negatives... Well, we'll just shut down like this. So negative becomes positive. Maybe that's a good way to say it. Okay, so it becomes positive. Maybe that's a good way to say it. So, for example, if we had uh, like negative 5, it would become a plus 5. Of course, uh, it wouldn't be that. Maybe it's negative 0.5, and then it would be times 100. So this just tells you the percent error here. That's it. That's all you need for the equation. So that seems okay. I mean, the equation looks a bit gross, but let's maybe actually do a numerical e example here. Um, I like this uh, screenshot from a TI-84, 2 plus 2 equals 5. You're like, <laughs> uh-oh, <laughs> that's not supposed to happen. So let's look at this. What's the percent error? If you estimate your bank balance as $70 uh, when it's in fact 78.1. So first of all, if you're going to do this on an exam, it really helps if you actually state, you, you tell the examiner, hey, I know what I'm doing. I know the um, equation right here. So it's not a bad thing to do to actually uh, write down the equation. And this is usually a good idea, right? So uh, well, I don't need all the arrows, but that's okay, right? We'll just let's click this and I'll just uh, remove them now. Let's just see if I can. There we go. So it's not a bad thing to rewrite this. So then we just have to now identify which of these numbers is what. So which one is the exact, which one is the approximate? I'll give it some thought, but I hope you see that this one right here is the um, exact. So this is going to be the exact value, which is VE. Therefore, this one right here must be the approximate, right? You estimated it, so that must be VA. Well, then it's just a matter of putting in the equation with the proper letters here. So absolute value of VA, VA is 70 minus VE, which is in this case is 78.1. Well, we can put in a zero here, it doesn't really matter. Divide that by VE, which is again 78.1. So what we do then, we multiply that by 100, and away we go, we just need a calculator for this. So I'm gonna get out my trusty TI calculator here. Uh, I'm going to have to overlay this actually on um, what I'm doing here. So let me just see here if I can get this one out of full screen. I'll make it as big as I can. I always have to do this whenever I'm doing my calculator, which is actually pretty annoying. But we'll see here. There we go. So if I need my calculator, here I go. Now I'm ready. So I can just put all this into the calculator. So I need a new page, but a calculator page. Oh, and I, a new calculator. There we go. So I just put in this stuff right here. So maybe I want a nice fraction symbol. So I use that one right there. And I'll put it in like this. So 70 minus 78.1. Don't get too tripped up about the absolute value. Yes, you can put in this function called abs, but um, I'll just show you what to do here. So we just do this right here. We have this number right here. We'll multiply it by 100, because we're supposed to do that at the end, times 100. We get minus 10.37. And remember, this is supposed to be absolute value. So if you get this right here with absolute uh, values, that means that any negative numbers turn into positive numbers. So in this case right here, instead of saying 10.37 uh, with a negative in front, we're just going to say positive 10.37. Okay, so that's what we're going to say here. So 
Now it's really weird because the IV says that you're supposed to only use uh, three significant figures, uh, but very often in the answer keys they have uh, four here in this case. In other words, they have two decimals. It's a weird thing with percents, but they often allow you to go two after. Oh well. But there we go. Uh, so you're not wrong if you say 10.4. How's that? If you rounded it, you know, and you said 10.4%, because this is uh, three significant figures, I think this is even better. You're following the IB's own rules. But you'll notice sometimes in the mark schemes for different uh, past exams, they allow this, which I think is a little bit strange. But oh well, there you go. So this is how we do this. It was important to just remember that the absolute value means that the number becomes positive. That's it.